Take a look at these passwords. Pause the video and comment down below which one do you think is best in terms of security? Is it A, B, or C? Okay, you did it? All right, the most secure password out of these was actually Passwords suck. I think we can all agree that typing them in, remembering them is just such a pain. Sure, there are alternatives to passwords, my favorite being the fingerprint sensor that is common in modern day smartphones and laptops. Well, favorite if they work right. Newer phones from Samsung feature really fast sensors, though others could be better. For example, the Google Pixel 7 sensor works for me, say, nine out of 10 times, and trust me, that one time when it doesn't work, it's super annoying. And then you have to go back to a pin or a password to just unlock your phone. Of course, there's also face unlocking using cameras, but that's even a more hit or miss. iPhone Face ID works fine, even in the dark, thanks to the infrared technology. But once again, other devices may only use a regular camera to identify your face, which is very slow. And on top of that, it doesn't work in the dark like the iPhone. So anyway, I wanted to bring up these alternatives to simply tell you that they're not perfect. And for the time being, we are stuck with passwords for more or less most of the websites, devices, and services that we use today. The biggest problem with passwords is that most people don't know how to create a good one. The security of a password can vary a lot. That's actually one of the strengths of other authentication methods. They're easy to set up and really secure. Like I'm sure that faking a face unlock using a printed image of someone is possible, but when it comes to fingerprints, it's a whole different ballgame. Now, tech giants like Google, Facebook, Microsoft, and many others try to force users to create good passwords that are secure, but usually what ends up happening is this. Okay, this website needs an account. Let's create one. Enter your username. Easy peasy. Password? Well, how about calculator? Password needs a capital letter? All right. Calculator with capital C it is then. Password must contain at least one number. Oh, okay, no problem. Calculator one. Your password must contain a special character. Oh, come on. Fine, calculator one with an asterisk. Okay, I'm obviously exaggerating this situation, but let's take it for granted. Is this password that I've just created bad? Well, to answer this question, we would need to dwell a bit deeper into how passwords are cracked. Now, what in the world is password cracking? Unfortunately, it doesn't mean grabbing a hammer and beating your computer with it. Although, I guess that would be kind of amusing. Instead, it's using PC graphics cards to try millions of combinations of passwords until it guesses the right one. The reason why graphics cards are used specifically is because they are really good at taking one input and multiplying it by various changes to get lots of unique outputs. This sort of tactic works best against simple passwords, as you can imagine. A GPU can try making one change at a time until it gets the right one. The biggest problem for password brute forces, as they're called, is password length and unique symbols. And that's because the longer and the more unique symbols your password will have, the more unique combinations the cracker will have to try, thus taking more time to brute force it. For example, if we take a look at passwords from the intro of this video, you'll soon realize that it all comes down to simple math. Of course, I put in the first option as a joke, though you would be surprised how many people use password as their actual password. The best way to visualize the strength of a password is to have a combination lock. First, the word password is made up of eight characters. So our lock will have eight little rotating dials. Now, these letters are from the English alphabet, which has a total of 26 different letters. That means that each dial will have 26 possible characters. So now if we take number 26 and increase it to the power of eight, we get a total of roughly 200 billion different combinations. I know that sounds like a lot because, well, it's a big number, but actually for a computer graphics card, that's nothing. Now the B password on this list might look like the best one out of the three because, you know, it has a ton of different symbols. However, if we do our math again, here's what we get. The lock would have 16 dials in this case, and each one will have 95 different possible characters, which means that we need to multiply 95 to the power of 16, and that is 4.4 times 10 to the power of 31. As you can see, by adding those few symbols and numbers, we increase the password strength by quite a bit. Lastly, let's check the C password. This one is a long one and has 34 characters in total while having less character variations. So the number of possible combinations in this password is 62 to the power of 34, equaling 8.7 to the power of 60. That is a whole lot more than the B password. Okay, so I've thrown a lot of math at you, but hopefully you get the idea. A strong password password should preferably be a long one and have at least a few symbols like an underscore, a dollar sign, an exclamation point, etc. The live hack that I tend to follow when it comes to making good passwords is having a system 
you can remember, but also be secure at the same time. For example, if I'm making a password for eBay, I might begin the password with something like a dollar sign to associate something with money and buying or selling items, then adding different random words and throwing a few numbers in there for good measure. Also, here's another pro tip if you want to make your passwords extra secure. And if you speak more than one language, feel free to add a few foreign symbols to your password. That's right, it turns out that knowing more than one language can be useful for more than just communication. You see, foreign letters utilize the ASCII extended table, which adds extra variations and therefore complexity for any password cracker. The only problem is that not all websites and apps support foreign characters, so that's something to be aware of. Before I let you go, I also wanted to say that having a good password doesn't mean that you will automatically be secure forever. Using two-factor authentication is still very, very important, especially since data breaches can result in your password getting leaked, and having to keep track of your passwords can also be kind of annoying. But at the very least, don't keep your passwords in a spreadsheet file accessible to just anyone. Password managers are a great alternative to that, and there are some really nice free options available too. But no matter which one you choose, just keep in mind that there is an element of trust, so picking the right one is key. Anyway, that'll be all for this video. I hope you learned something new about passwords and password cracking. I'll leave two more videos right here that I think you'll enjoy, but that's all for me. Take care.